That was Seth's Rob show, the game's special event. Kevin, he's also a podcaster, so I have so many things to ask him, and he's in a band. So, hi, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. Great. So, okay, I was looking up Louder Than Life because I want to go there one day, and that's how I found you from those hashtags. So, tell me how I've done Aftershock forever, and I've never got to do I Love Danny and all his festivals, Louder Than Life. How was that? Pick a day. No, it was. <laughs> so in I know. It, in general, great time. Um, uh, long story short, uh, I kind of got my start with Danny uh, Wimmer with incarceration and first year doing that with um, my heart. We weren't like allowed to do anything, or at least I was told we weren't allowed to do anything from my uh, but president, of vice vice president of programming and like good guy, but I don't think he ever like asked the right questions. So like I just went and I was yeah. Fine. The next year, I was like, I don't know. I feel like I'd be able to do something. Um, Danny Wimmer Presents is very, like, by the book, and they have rules and stuff, and I'm not one to, like, push boundaries. But they, um, like, I see people, like, interviewing people, and one of the things I was told were no interviews, but there's a whole interview lounge. So I was like, I don't think that's true. So, like, I just started talking to the right people, started asking, and then eventually Inc. was my testing thing this year where I had, like, really tiny microphones like this big and I interviewed bands because I was real cute. And then I had this like epiphany there. I was like, all right, hold on. If there is an interview thing, interview tent, and there's photographers on site, I bet those photographers need somewhere to edit their photos. And I bet they need to at, like put them out the second the band is almost done with their set mm -hmm. or currently putting it out. And there's Wi-Fi here. So I'm looking around, I'm like, these guys have bags they're yeah people. they can bring their cameras in they can bring stuff in i was like all right so funny enough i was like you know what? i'm just gonna try this and i went and i actually got like little actual microphones with the little mic flag on it and stuff and um yeah uh, i applied for louder than life not last minute but like it wasn't <laughs> as soon as it got announced and um you know me me and my best bud went and Brought the camera, brought the mics, and it was, it was a fantastic time until, you know, the old hurricane came through. Yeah. Uh, it was only a five, it was only a five hour drive for me, but it was, it was quite long. That's a lot. I'm, I'm 10 minutes from aftershock. And sometimes I'm so exhausted after the show. And I realize how lucky I am to drive home to my house and cuddle my dog and go to sleep when everyone's flown in and in hotels and stuff. Like yeah. I take it for granted. Did you, but you stayed close to the venue when you were there. Right. So the it, here's the joke. <laughs> you did not. Did you drive? Well, we, home? we drove. No, no, no. We didn't. No, but I'm we saying nightly. Come back. They, no, no, no. We didn't do that. Okay. The joke was because of how late I was approved. Um, hotels were very yeah. Expensive. Like I think even if as soon as they announce it hotel prices go up and that's a good strategy on the hotel front you know make right money. that's sac um, and sac sells out like two months prior to the event and then there's gonna there's random people posting their couches for like like hundreds of dollars locally so someone like me who uh does not want to spend 500 dollars a day on a hotel last minute me and my buddy i was like listen we're just gonna have to camp and i don't mean like get a tent and camp i mean like we're gonna sleep in your car and he's like right, yeah fuck yeah i've done it um first night there like we left wednesday night and we drove and we drove we drove and eventually we're like we're done we're crashing on this rest stop uh, my buddy shows me his phone i'm like what are you showing me he's like my mom bought us a hotel for the nights that we're here i was like oh well, go mom. mom so we were 15 minutes from where we needed to be so it was good Oh, that's really nice of her. Because, yeah, and you know how mentally draining it can be to interview all day and be focused on the festival and then have to not get a good night's sleep. I don't know. I'm at this age where I better get eight hours if I'm going to be interviewing another 10 bands the next day so my brain's not fried. <laughs> and I heard you had a little crush on one of the bands. I don't know if we could all say. The bands, all the bands. Yeah. I, all I the bands. <laughs> um, so Jigsaw Youth, uh, you talked to them. And we, we've been we've been joking in our DMs. Yeah. They're sweethearts. They are. Um, Thursday day one was probably like the best day of my life ever. It, one, it didn't get canceled. Two, it didn't rain. Well, I mean like a little drizzle, but like nothing to freak out over. Like I was able to keep my t-shirt on and not put my windbreaker and my hoodie. Like it was fine. Uh, and then we saw Slipknot. But in that interview tent, um, 
you know, I had people I have already lined up to interview this, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his name is Mike, Matt. He kind of like, Oh my, I don't know. There's so many managers that you're saying. I don't, I can't so remember. One of the guys there and it, it's in my emails. Too. Oh, Mike. Yes. That's okay. So Mike, I, you're like, talking about the head guy that checks us all in. Uh -huh. I fucking so, love him. I've been working with him for 10 years and he's a sweetheart. He is. Um, yeah. He, either I have missed him every single time at incarceration or he just doesn't go to incarceration, but whatever. No, uh, he took five years off and he just got uh -oh. back. He started oh. in 2013 and that's when I first met him and he took time off, but he is one of the nicest, most professional and it completely yeah. always has everyone's schedule lined up. I, I so I, I keep doing Mike. side stories, but it, like it makes the picture bit better. Incarceration, Mike's not there. Mike is the guy that, you know, hey, I have this, this, this band scheduled. You still good for that? Um, and then randomly, if like you're just hanging out, sipping on coffee, he'll come over and be like, hey, they just got done a little early. Do you have time for them? He's he's a great guy. Incarceration, so yeah. much. Like you would check in. Um, they would ask like, hey, who do you got lined up? Uh, we'll keep an eye open for him. But like, we're also busy. Like, okay, no problem. I generally know who people are, but sometimes I don't. Um, Same. Mike was very helpful in that instant, but you know, I had interview and an interview and an interview, just like you, it's, it gets pretty exhausting. <laughs> and yeah. you think about it until you're like halfway through the day. You're like, I haven't seen any bands. I've talked, yeah. to them, but I haven't gone and like actually lived. But um, as we keep going, I see these two girls over here getting interviewed by whoever, whoever, whoever. And I look at my buddy, I'm like, they're probably open for an interview at some point. Um, he's helping me uh, kind of not get too crazy because like <laughs> by yourself, it'd be wild. To... You need a buddy system. Yeah. yeah. And he's my camera guy. So that, that was very helpful. So eventually I had a break probably after five bands and they were just kind of hanging out. I was like, excuse me, could I please interview you? <laughs> yeah. And then funny enough, I already had them scheduled to interview and I just totally forgot because they were in my email. I was like, wow. Um, and it, was actually, it gets crazy though. The week before okay. festival, I'm always checking my email. It's always changing. I said yes to two bands at the same time by accident, even though everything's like lined up. I just, you know, these things happen because there's a lot going on. And so the, the other band was great. I think head PE, I pushed back 20 minutes. I'm also, you know, I want to do longer, but we don't have that time. So I only get sometimes 10 minute slots and there's so much I want to ask that I'm trying to cram in as much as I can into 10 minutes. Or then the Wi-Fi wasn't that good this year at Aftershock. And I was trying to bring like a live aspect to my Spotify mm -hmm. channel. And so it, it's always like sometimes a shit show, but it's a learning process. And, you know, and so wait, what day got rained out at Louder so Than Light? Was, so Thursday was perfect. Friday. Well, Thursday night, there was an announcement saying like, hey, Hurricane's kind of coming through. Uh, we're going to push doors back, but it didn't say when. And I, I love, I love music. I love the people. I love interacting with whoever, rather it be a band or audience member. Some of these people, man, like they just weren't getting it. They didn't understand like the threat of what the hurricane winds could do or like whatever. And Friday, wow. I get it. It's Slayer Day. Slayer's back, baby. But yeah, it's Friday, so like everyone's itching to see Slayer and there's plenty of other bands too but I get it um they said doors were pushed back but they didn't give a time so everyone in the comments was like when some people eventually was like hey just like stay patient <laughs> and I, I guarantee they'll tell us um day of yeah if you looked out your window you're like I doubt this is actually happening now it looked bad like it looked yeah. dangerous and I didn't realize how bad yeah. it was until uh, Chris Jericho of Fozzy posted like a quick little Instagram story or he probably did a video and he was actually inside um, and they were the only band that entire day that did sound check, but they kept going on red alert. So they had to shut everybody down. Media wasn't allowed in. Um, photographers weren't allowed. Like no one that was working that wasn't already inside setting things up. People weren't allowed in. So me and my buddy, we were like, you know, it would be a really dumb idea is if we uh, went there and waited because we don't yeah. know what this is going to be. Um, so we went, well, we went to like the, the Kentucky mall and like looked around and then you could tell everybody was at the Kentucky mall because everybody's wearing like rocker shirts clothes or band shirts or like whatever. And you're like, oh. yeah. Um, eventually letter in life was like, Hey, we tried, we really tried, but like, it's just too dangerous um, for the bands, for you. And then 
every not everybody but like a majority of people were like oh you're canceling for just a little bit of rain here's blue ridge rock fest all over again and i'm like guys come on just like understand what you got to be careful when your life's in danger and it's a threat and then also from a financial aspect um getting sued later people could say you put my life in danger and so i'm glad they chose the right decision and canceled it but was it only friday that it it, it stopped yes um, okay so i i encourage people to check out chris jericho's page because like i didn't realize what the inside actually looked like like the next day saturday we were there and it was muddy cool friday you could see the actual winds blowing stuff and i don't know what the numbers were on those wind speeds but it was like it was pretty up there um, hi guys yeah. yeah and it wasn't just the wind it was the rain and like maybe people don't realize how expensive music equipment is but I guarantee um, Slayer, Very. Out whatever, from wherever they're from right now, uh, they don't want to risk that. And I bet a lot of other bands don't want to do that either. So it did suck. I couldn't see Slayer. did suck. I couldn't see some of my favorite bands. But you know what? I was safe. I wasn't in danger. And you were safe. And you'll see them again. I had a day off. I got to sleep a little bit. We just hung out. It was nice. I needed a day off. You know how you start feeling it? So I had only done three-day festivals prior. This was my first four-day festival. And on Saturday, I was feeling it. Like I just, my voice was hoarse. I was just exhausted. And so I only had like three or four bands on Saturday. And I remember being like, I actually want to enjoy this. I want to go see more bands. And I, Alien Ant Farm let me come on stage. That was probably one of my highlights of this year's Aftershock and mm -hmm. hanging out with CKY and all these bands I grew up with in the 90s and I dig. And so then I felt refreshed, not kind of grinding so hard on Saturday, but just playing. And I went to bed early. So Sunday, I was able to hit a bunch of bands again and go back. But, um, Something you intrigued me that I don't do a lot and I need to do more is like walk around the festival. I used to do it so long ago and now I'm just tired, I think. And I <laughs> just go from media to backstage to the bar to like nap on a couch. And I do miss kind of walking around the festival. I did it for like an hour. And then I was like, okay, too many people. Ah, and I ran back in like. Yeah, louder in life. I don't know what the max number was on that. Thousands, right? aftershock i could imagine is not double but like still more because it's california and it's sunny and it's nice and there's no hurricane yeah uh, there was one guy like walking around was nice because one thursday all i did was sit and i remember oh. the only time i actually physically like got up was to get up and get like a coffee to keep me going or um we like moved move seats because i'm not taking up the lounge it's not my lounge it's everybody's lounge so we would just get away and sit down and recoup and go okay who's next and you know check notes um there was one point where uh, i was scheduled to interview offspring which very thankful for that i saw that i've never got to interview offspring this was my first like not do it in the media tent thing. well incarceration i knew one of the bands and they brought me to their trailer and i was able to do it like that so a very i love trailer thing. interviews because the sounds so much better very similar thing where like I was taken away by uh, I think the manager kind of set it up with me I can't quite remember his name but we would we would go over we're waiting and we do the interview and then we walk out and I was like I looked at Tyler I was like do you remember the last time either of us had like peed or like yeah hands or anything he's like dude I don't think since this morning I was like yeah we just got a visitor same I just won't pee oh I have a kitty too and I just won't drink water. And all of a sudden it'll be 7 p.m. And I'm like, I need to chug water. I need to go to the bathroom. But I get so excited. Like I love music so much that my brain just shuts off into living and it's in music mode of like, who's next? What am I going to ask them? Oh, so cute. Mine's naughty. And she just tries to walk on my keyboard and like turn my interviews off. Um, this, is, this is one of a, uh, of a couple. This is Zoe. She will sit here for a moment and then I'm going to put her down and she'll never come back again. Oh, my marshmallow is asleep on the couch next to me. It's where my cat and dog are best friends. So they're like this odd pair. So wait, and tell me about your band. Okay. Uh, a quick little transition because I think yeah. it makes the most sense. Uh, similar how you said day three, you were like done. Day yeah. three was our last day there. We didn't do four days because the next day we had to drive to Indianapolis for a show. Um, so we oh. did three days. And I only had like a few bands scheduled for interviews. And yeah. I could have walked around and be like, hey, you free for an interview? Yeah. Me thinking about it right now, I'm getting tired of thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I looked at him, he looked at me, and we were like, 
are we done? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so we just, because it wasn't like, okay, let, let's do all day and then let's like go home and we're only, no offense, but you're 10 minutes away. Oh, I wish. We were five hours yeah. still. So drove back, sleep for like 10 minutes. No, I'm kidding. Just, that's just what it felt like. Got yeah. Up, had to go see the guys. We packed up. I think we practiced first. I don't remember. Um, packed up the truck, got everything ready, and all right, five more hours to Indianapolis from our place. And then uh, we, we did that show, and it was very cool, very intimate. And, uh, and then we had to drive five hours back, and that was fun. So uh, you performed a show right after uh -huh. interviewing all the bands yeah. at Louder Than Life. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How did the show go? How did you feel? The show was good. So uh, people ask musicians all the time. You've probably asked this question, like, hey, you know, do you have any, like, jitters? Or do you have, any, like, nervousness, anxiety, or anything like that? Sometimes, but most of it comes from, like, all right, where where are we? <laughs> yeah. What are we walking into? What's the vibe going to be when we get there? Um, there's a classic meme that musicians um, share around that says, like, you look at the, like, baseboard on the ground, and they're like, this is the stage. <laughs> mm. so it's like, is that going to happen to us? Um, in general, this place seemed cool, but, you know, I have, like, aunts and uncles out in Indianapolis, and I haven't been there since I was 13, so uh, I don't know what Indianapolis is like anymore. In general, great. Uh, very welcoming people. Uh, photographer that we hired that day for live were like, hey, do you have like five minutes to do like promo somewhere? And we walked around the corner, found an old movie theater that had lights on still. So those lights really look cool. And did some shots there. Um, people really, so no one knows who we are. We, we expect that. We're from West Virginia. We drive out to Indianapolis to play with some bands that people actually know. Cool. Um, and one of the things that runs through my mind is like, is anyone going to like us? <laughs> is anyone? You hope they like you yeah, physically. I don't care if people like me. That's <laughs> like, well, I hope they hate me. We, we are you, you're in the Appalachian mountains. Yeah. 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 So no, you're dating your cousin. You're fucking all your cousins. That's hot. No. <laughs> Do you have like 12 toes? No, I actually have all my teeth too. Um, Do you watch soft white <laughs> underbelly? I don't know what that is. Oh my God, go when we're done and watch Soft White <laughs> Underbelly. This guy from LA flies into West Virginia and the Whittakers. You need to watch the Whittakers family. They're this giant inbred family in West Virginia that live up in the mountains. And he's made a lot of documentaries about them. You've got to check them out. I mean, I've had West Virginia history class back in the day and, and we, they, they talked about that stuff. Um, I am so far north of West Virginia. Like, I'm at the very tippy top of West Virginia, and so is my buddy. Like, we're 45 minutes away, but we're still really north. Pittsburgh's 45 minutes. Uh, Columbus, Ohio is two-ish hours. Cleveland's three-ish hours. Are you going to go to Sonic Temple? I, uh, we're going to see. I, I, I I want to. We'll just go if I need to. But I have to go through my email and submit the, the application right now. Me too. Uh, I'm also still, my interviews from uh, Louder Than Life are out. But my clips that I want to do are not because I haven't had time to sit down and do it. Um, then I have pictures to edit and this and that. It just keeps stacking up. And that's all not inside my house that I'm trying to get stuff done here. But anyways, um, band stuff. What, what would you like to know? Um, I'm sorry if I'm ranting. <laughs> no, that's okay. I do that too. Okay, so... Do you guys have an album out right now? What do you guys got going on or what coming up for 2025? So 2025, um, currently uh, on Halloween, we're releasing a, a Metallica cover. And it's like really, it's, the term is hard. It's very hard. It's very fun. It's very cool. And that's not me just like saying that because I'm in the band. It's like, it's actually <laughs> just so stupid cool. Awesome. Um, beyond that, I asked everybody like, hey, how do you feel about like releasing like two singles or two songs, not an EP, but just like two songs out at once, uh, maybe like the first of year. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's at the end of November. It's at the end of October right now. We <laughs> haven't even started. So I don't know if that's happening. Um, album. We have been chipping away at, and I'm, I think I'm looking at the folder on my desktop right now. Um, it's basically done. It's basically ready to go. I have to finish lyrics for two songs and record that. Uh, we need to go through and just like go, all right, does anything need change? No. Next, next, next. Ten songs. Um, 
I'm probably <laughs> mixing and mastering and producing it, but oh, yeah, wow, that's fine. you're doing it all. That's kind of what we've done since the beginning because it's expensive. Like, yeah, one, I don't have time to go to a studio. I don't, and neither neither do the other three guys. Um, so that's a we have to book studio time, whether it be per hour or just here's money, thanks. Um, then we would have to record it all there. Then we'd have to wait and hope that they can get it back to us in a decent manner. And we like how it sounds. Um, in general, we, I'm going to say we, cause I, I do a lot of the work, but they help me like, Hey, what if we did this, 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 and then I do it, or we're physically in the same room together. And they're like, what if we adjusted this or, you know, it's not just me. It's not, that's not how it is. Um, but once we get everything ready, then yes, I will have to lock in and, do this stuff and hopefully everyone likes it as far as when that might happen um <laughs> undisclosed right now no question so um, wait if you could choose between being a rock journalist or a musician what would you rather want to be so that's a i don't know that's a great question um because I like, I like both aspects of the thing i like seeing both ends of everything um so if there's a third option of just doing both i would do both um, I like it. The journalism thing, like I went to college, I graduated with that stuff. Like I have me too. The music stuff, I've just been DIYing for however long. Um, I see because of the journalism side of things, I can kind of see now behind the scenes things that I never would have thought of beforehand. So mm. it's kind of like mm. an educational mm. benefit, and it goes like this to both sides as I learn more. Um, the live aspect side of things, playing live, there's no better feeling. There's also no better no better feeling than when you just have a great conversation with a band that you've just met. You've listened Yeah, to isn't it feel good when you nail the interview? Like you have just the right amount of information, but you're not staring at your notes and you throw it in and it lands. It it people don't understand it's actually harder than it seems like I'm trying to have a natural conversation, but in the back of my mind, I have five questions that I want to sneak in. Mm -hmm. And also have you ever had, I think one of my favorite highs that happened with under oath last night is when the band goes, Oh, we checked out your page already. We like what you do, or we liked the interview. That mm -hmm. makes me feel so good. Like, Oh, job done. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the Joe Rogan thing, but I, I had a conversation with somebody where they're like, oh, you have a podcast? Let me guess, you have a super big ego too. I mean, not really, no. Like my whole purpose for what I do is to get information out about a band. I've talked to bands that literally just started. I've talked to bands that have been around since uh, before I was born. Uh, Finger Eleven, Local Age, all those all those bands. Um, and my my purpose is to hopefully someone listens to and goes, these guys sound cool. I want to check yeah. Them. And that's it. Like I, you can check me out if you really want to, but like, that's not the, that's not the goal. Um, and how you said you have specific questions you would like to ask. Sometimes you don't have enough time and it's just like, well, oh, well, or <laughs> what I had to kind of explain is my role as that person is to kind of have a start, middle and end. I have to keep it flowing in a way of doing things. I'm sure you've had interviews where like, they have no idea how to answer questions or like it maybe the they're... one word answer. That's what I can't uh, uh. stand. It's your project that, you know, I'm interviewing you on and uh. I ask a question and you're like, yes. And I'm like, oh, where do I go with that? <laughs> I'm also not going to drop names because I don't want them to come after me. There have been so like I had those uh, microphones from Flattered in Life and I only had two. I had a receiver for two and I have two in general. Um, I don't know how many members you try to interview but i know not every member of every band is going to want to talk i know there's yeah. like probably one or two people that want to talk or can talk and that's it uh the other members like are happy to be there but just standing there off to the side they don't want to do that so like no problem go, go do your thing um i had a mic i usually hold it to the person next to me and if there's somebody else involved like hey you can hold the mic you know you can pass it to other members if need be um, I have been surprised at how musicians don't know how, how to hold a mic. <laughs> it, oh yeah. Uh, too close or too far away. Or like, so you would think, or so this is right in my mouth. Um, this dude, that's what she said. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, me. <laughs> Uh, and then moved it. No, and so I don't even do multiple mics now. It's just so much to hang on to. I used to have a massive uh, two cameras, two tripods. I had all this stuff and I'd mm -hmm. carry it with, and my cameraman or woman would carry it. And it'd be so much. Now I'm all about fun and convenience. Yeah. So I just have one laptop and one mic and I just try to angle it towards the band. And if it works, it works. Like a little bit what you said of, you know, I don't think I have a big ego, but what I really want to do is bring the fans closer to the bands. And I love and appreciate all music so much so if i can have one fan discover something cool or unique they didn't know about a band that they love because i like watching interviews with bands to know more about them and i like to kind of deep dive into a lot of things so that's the whole goal and i i don't know it's and it's uh, to get free concert tickets dude i just got put on under oath again tonight i got put on for trapped on wednesday i don't have to buy concert tickets and i get to go see my favorite performers for free it's like we're living the dream man <laughs> yeah and that's the thing too we might have those tickets, but we're not be able to see these bands as much as we want if we're interviewing bands already, like you and I have already discussed. Also, I don't know how much Aftershock tickets would have been. A lot. VIP. A lot. Thousands. I don't have that money. Me neither. I'm sorry. I don't. Me if, neither. If you do, and I'm, I'm speaking like you. If yeah. You can, good for you. I'm very mm -hmm. I can't do that. Same. I got a mortgage and a car and a family. And that I will say, piggybacking on, you're like, I had to drive home. I talked to everyone in media. I'm the only person that had kids in all, like there was 12 different media outlets. So I had to leave on day four at 11 PM and pick up two kids to take them to school the next day and pack their lunches and get up at six in the morning and, and drive a couple hours. Cause my, one of my exes is far away. And so I was like telling them and they're like, Oh, you're nuts. We're going to go home and collapse. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go parent for five days in a row. And that is, <laughs> that's a fucking, it's like Mount Everest uh -huh. that I'm climbing. And they knew mommy was tired <laughs> on my a game that week after, after shock. <laughs> I think, I don't think I took, well, dude, though. thank you so much for, for stopping by. Of course. Um, Sorry, what did you say? I was going to say, um, I don't think I took PTO the Monday after Louder Than Life. So Louder Than Life, Louder Than Life, Louder Than Life, home, show, home, 7.30, work. You went to work. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. And then I sell wine. So I dropped the kids off and then I'm back at the winery and I just was like, I'll sleep when I'm done. It's fine. I just didn't look good. I had the hair and the messy bun. I wasn't all, you know. Yeah. Y'all up. But I'm actually going to start getting ready for Under Oath later tonight. I'm having the girlfriends over to pregame. But thank you so much, Kevin, for stopping by Steps Rock Show. Of course. Thanks so much. And we'll do this again. I think it'd be fun to catch up with, like, what's going on in your neck of the woods and my neck of the woods. We're literally on the opposite ends of the country. so. <laughs> I know. I love it, though.